Good morning, everybody. And I am here today to um, show you a walkthrough of the various hosting controls that you have available to you in Zoom, uh, depending on uh, various devices that you may be on. So um, I'm going to start off with a Windows uh, version of Zoom. And in the Windows version of Zoom, it's very similar to what you should have available to you on a Mac if you are operating on a Mac. Um, the, the Mac and Windows versions are pretty much identical uh, in terms of features. They look a little bit different, but the features are all in there. Uh, if you have any trouble doing this on a Mac, let me know and I can help you get through it. But uh, we'll start with that. So we'll start with a Windows version and then I'm going to switch over to a Chrome version and then I'll switch over to an iPad version. Um, the biggest difference in terms of devices, in terms of hosting controls, is the Chromebook. The iPad has very similar controls to a Windows and a Mac. Uh, the Chromebook has the fewest features for whatever reason. Zoom just hasn't gotten their act together quite yet. So I'm sure it'll get there eventually. but. Uh, we'll start off with Windows for now. All right, so here I am in my Windows version of Zoom, and I am the host of this meeting. Uh, so we see we have various um, my various controls down here on the bottom. Going from left to right is my mute unmute uh, button. So this is if I want to be heard or not heard. I also can access my audio settings over here and select my microphone. If I have multiple microphones or speakers, you can select whichever ones that you are uh, using. Generally, it should be set to same as system. Um, if you're not sure, do that and that should work best for you. If you have a specific microphone that you want to use or a specific headphone that you want to use or speakers, then you can definitely select that. To test them out, you're just going to click test speaker and microphone. I hear that. So that's good. Um, and I check my microphone there. Okay, so you can do that. Great. <clears throat> the other settings that you have in here are you can switch to phone audio. We've gotten some reports about audio issues um, from especially from the host and uh, if you switch to phone audio, that should clear it up. That'll give you a phone number that you call in with the cell phone um, and you just listen to phone audio. So you would um, mute your um, computer and uh, turn the volume way down and switch and just listen through your phone and that usually helps with audio issues. Okay, so if you wanna leave computer audio, you can do that there. And then audio settings are here. There's more audio settings in there. Generally, you shouldn't have to mess with any of that, but if you are having issues, you might need to. So just so you know, that's where they are. Uh, the next control from the left is the stop or start video. So this is where you would stop or start your video. If I click it, it turns my video off. Click it again, it turns my video on. Uh, different settings in here. Here is where you can choose your virtual background. If you want to set a virtual background, you can do that in there. And then there are multiple video settings in here that you can make use of. All right. Uh, okay, great. Uh, security, not something that you're going to really use too, too much. Uh, you can if you want to. The most common one that you would do is lock meeting. Uh, if you wanted to disable the waiting room temporarily in a meeting, you can do that here. Uh, and here's where you can control what the participants can do. So if you want them to be able to share a screen, keep that checked. If you don't, turn it off. If you want them to be able to chat, keep that on or off, um, renaming themselves or unmuting themselves. So, um, so this is helpful. Unmute themselves is good if you, want, if you don't want them to unmute themselves. Um, uncheck that. That's a good one. And if you need to remove a specific participant, you can do that here, but I'll show you another place to do that. It's a little bit easier. All right, the next tool here is the participants tool. And this brings up a window, shows you your participants, okay? Now in on across all devices in your participants window, you can see all the participants in the meeting and you have access or you should have access to these uh, non-verbal uh, emojis kind of to give feedback to you as the host. All right, so um, this comes in especially handy, especially because Chromebooks don't support response emojis, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, so if you do want them to respond non-verbally um, by saying yes, usually you say, or teachers say thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever, just have them click yes or no. Um, or you, there's under more, there's the uh, thumbs up, thumbs down there, applause, I need a break, or I'm gonna be away for a few minutes. Okay, so you as the host have these also. All the participants have all these except for clear all. You can clear them all. So if people respond, then you've got your response. That's great. Now you clear all and then the responses all go away. Um, in the participants window, you can un, uh, ask to unmute 
so you can ask people to unmute if they are muted, okay? You also have this more button, which is gonna come in super handy for hosts, okay? And for co-hosts as well. When you click on the more button, you get uh, your rename for you as the host, but uh, next to other people, you have um, more options. Stop video, spotlight video, make host, um, withdraw co-host permission. So for this particular, for the Chromebook, I have them being the co-host here. Um, so I can withdraw that, I'm gonna do that right now. So they are no longer my co-host, okay? So I can make them a co-host, I can rename them, I can put them in a waiting room. Putting them in a waiting room is good for students who might be a little disruptive or need a little bit of a timeout. Waiting room can be a nice space for a timeout, then you can send a message to the person in the waiting room. If I put the person in the waiting room, so I'm gonna put Chromebook in the waiting room. Now I have Chromebook in the waiting room, I can send them a message and be like, your behavior was disruptive. Um, please be attentive and productive in class. Um, and then that sends a message out to the waiting room. So the Chromebook, Chromebook gets that message. Um, so the people in the waiting room get that message. It's not an individual message and they can't reply. So um, everybody um, will see that that's in the waiting room. So if it's more than one person, they'll get that little message there. Um, and then you can say, so say I'm gonna give you two minutes to, minutes for a break and then let you back in the meeting. Okay, so then you can say something like that and then in two minutes, let them back in. That's what you would do there. If I wanna let Chromebook back in, I'm gonna click admit. Okay, so now I have my participants in here. There we go, now he's back. And back as the co-host. Okay, I'm gonna just remove him for now. All right, very good. So those are the more uh, options. And then flat out remove is, is another option that you can do. You can remove a participant if the student continues to be disruptive or somebody who doesn't belong in the class, um, then you just click on more and remove. Okay, they may ask to get back in, but just don't let them in. And that's what you gotta do there. Okay, so that's it for uh, settings under participants. Uh, also, under participants, you can invite, you get the uh, login information, you can send an email, you have the, um, the code up here. If there was a password with a meeting, it would be down here in the lower right hand corner, or you can send an email if you want to do that, or copy the link, however it is that you need to invite somebody. If they're having trouble logging in, um, that's usually what you might need to do. Just click invite and send them an email. All right, polls, here's where you're going to manage your polls. Um, so I can't log in. I can't launch any polls right now, but this is where you would launch a poll. If you had created it ahead of time, you would be able to select which poll you wanted to launch. If you hadn't created a poll, it should allow you to do one on the fly. Um, that's where polls is. Chat brings up the chat window. When you're in the chat window, you uh, have multiple options and you change the options down here. You can do everyone in the meeting. You can do just an individual message to a student. So this one is Chromebook or iPad. Um, with this box, the other thing you can do here is you can choose which participants can chat with. Everyone publicly, the host only, or no one. Okay. Um, you can also merge this to the window, to the meeting window. So now it's all one window. Okay. If you like that better, you can do that. To pop that back out, you click on this little button here, click pop out, and then you can move that wherever you want to. That is the chat window. Uh, next is share screen. All right, this is a pretty common feature uh, that people have questions about. When you click on share screen, you get a window that asks you what you want to share. My particular computer has two desktops because I have two screens. I've got my screen and my laptop and an external monitor. So I can choose to uh, share either one of those. I can select whiteboard and that provides uh, the online whiteboard. I can do an iPhone or iPad, which will connect my iPhone or my iPad to the device that I can draw on that or share an app or something like that. These are all windows of um, apps that I have open. So if I wanna just show a particular app, then I can choose whichever one I wanna do that. These are Chrome browsers, this is a Zoom app, this is the chat app, uh, this is my screen casting recording software, so I wouldn't wanna share that. Um, so generally I only share um, desktops. I only share my screen one or screen two. Those are the only two things I'm gonna share. Um, the other thing you can do if you wanna get fancy is click on advanced. Uh, you can choose to share just a portion of the screen. 
You can choose to just share music or a computer sound, which might be good for like if you're giving the kids a task and you want to just play some music and say when the song is over, then we're done with the task. That's up to you. Uh, and you can do content from a second camera, like a document camera, which is helpful also. All right. Again, this is a Mac, uh, Windows version, so these features are available on Windows and Mac. Okay. You can also choose to share files from your Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, or Box account. Generally, you're not going to do this because you're going to be sharing files through Google Classroom, uh, and this is just kind of adding another layer of confusion that you don't need to do, so I wouldn't do that. When you are sharing your screen, just as a reminder, these two boxes down here should be checked. Okay, um, if you especially if you want to share your sound. So if you're showing a video or something like that, you want to make sure this is checked. And you want to make sure this is checked. Uh, and then you click share and it shares it. I'm going to move into sharing right now because the hosting controls are a little bit different when you're sharing. <clears throat> okay, so when I am sharing my screen, you're going to notice a couple of things. You see this bar here that I have that kind of automatically goes away. I can move it around by clicking that green part, move it down here, wherever I want to move it. If you have two monitors, you can move it off to the different screen. Right now, you see on the right hand side, I've got my grid of participants that I can see. All right. If I don't want to see my participants, I'm going to go to more and I'm going to do hide video panel. That puts them somewhere else, takes them off the screen. Okay. If you're not seeing them at all and you do want to see them, then you go back to that toolbar, you click on more, and you click on show video panel. That's been the number one question this week. All right, show video panel. I only have three participants in here, but if you had like a class of 20 or whatever, the grid, um, you'd get another icon right about here that looks like a waffle, um, like the Google waffle. Click on that, and then you're able to resize the window, however big or small you want it to be. All right, know that this is not shown to the students when you're sharing your screen, they won't see that. And this will not be shown to the students when you're sharing your screen. They're not going to see that either. But it's going to be in your way of whatever it is that you're sharing. So just be aware that you can move these things around if there's something that you need to access. If you have two screens, you can slide it over to the other screen so then you're seeing your students on one screen and what you're sharing on the main screen. Other sharing options in here, you can share a, a, an additional device. So you can share your screen. And then you can also do a whiteboard on top of that. So while you're sharing your screen, you can add a whiteboard too. Okay, you're still sharing your screen. It just creates multiple windows for the students, uh, for the participants. But if that's what you want to do, you can do that. All right, uh, you can annotate. All right, while you're sharing, so I can draw all over my screen just like I would with a whiteboard. Um, notice, note that participants can also annotate. If you don't want your participants to annotate, I'm going to stop this. If you don't want your students, uh, participants to, uh, to annotate, you can go to this more menu again and do disable participants annotation. All right. Again, these are controls. Disable participants annotation um, are is only available when you're sharing a screen, I believe. We'll double check that in a minute. Okay. But these settings, these are all while you're sharing the sharing controls. All right. If you forget to check share computer sound uh, and the kids can't hear your video, go to that more uh, menu again and click on share computer sound. OK, same thing for video clip. All right. Um, OK, good. So that's sharing screen. I'm going to stop sharing. And we're going to move along our little buttons here. OK, so that was share screen. Next is record self-explanatory. You click that to start recording. You can choose to record it on the computer, record to the cloud. Um, more advice and recording in another video, but that's what you're going to do there. Breakout rooms are managed here. You can create your rooms. You can create individual rooms for each student. All right, now I created two rooms, Chromebooks in one, iPads in another one. I can open the rooms. They go into their rooms. Uh, pause for a second. Okay, so now they're both in those rooms. Uh, I can go and join them in each of those rooms. So I can go join breakout room one. Here I am in breakout room one. I can switch rooms by clicking breakout rooms in my tab there. Click join, go to breakout room two. If a student in a breakout room has a question, they're going to be able to uh, push a button and um, raise their hand and get there. All right, we're going to leave the breakout room. 
I'm going to go back into hosting, call these kids back, close all the rooms, and they're going to come back into the main room. All right. All right. So that's breakout rooms. Reactions was what I, I was uh, talking about uh, before. I mentioned about reactions uh, when I was talking about the nonverbal um, feedback that, that you can get from the kids in the participants menu. Uh, reactions are available on um, not on Chromebooks, essentially. They're available on Windows computers, available on Mac computers. They are available on iPads. So um, you can these are quick for a clap or for a thumbs up. Okay, if they're on a Chromebook, they're not going to see this reactions button at all. So what you probably want to get in the habit of doing is not using this too too much because a lot of kids are on Chromebooks um, and going. You're saying at the bottom of the participants tab. Click on more, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, and just get them in the habit of doing that. Once they get in the habit of doing that, it'll be fine. Uh, it's just something you got to explain for the first few times. All right, that is reactions. All right, and those are my tools. All right, those are my tools in my toolbar. That's what I got. Um, the additional things that you have here is I can just select to be in speaker view or in gallery view. Now I'm in speaker view. Uh, so on my face is little. I don't know why it should be big because I'm the one speaking, but that's okay. Um, and then you can switch back to gallery view so you have an, a give equal space to all participants. That is an individual preference. You can't control that on the participant end. The students all have their own choices that they can do. My children, nine times out of ten, want to be in, in um, gallery view so they can see all their friends. Uh, but it gets very distracting for done. So I would encourage students to be on speaker view as much as possible. All right, I'm going to switch hosting controls over to a Chromebook. Okay, so I am now on my Chromebook, and I am the host of this session at this time. So um, similar controls to what we had on a computer. Mute, unmute, stop video, video, security. Um, same options and all those things that you had on Windows. Participants similar options to what you had in there. You have the ability to unmute. Um, you have a more button, so you can make them be the co-host. You can allow them to record, put them in the waiting room. You can do all those things here uh, in the participants tab. You can pop this out. It is attached automatically, but you can pop it out if you want to. So you can make it be a window that you can move around. That's up to you. In that participants window, remember, here's where you have that nonverbal communication. Um, the students have access to that too. You don't have that responses um, icon on, in your toolbar here. Okay, so you don't uh, reactions. Excuse me. So you don't have the ability to do the reactions directly from this toolbar, but you do have them in here in the participants bar. So just keep that in mind. You've got your chat window that you can manage. Again, it starts automatically and is attached right that right to your um, meeting screen. If you want to pop that out, you can pop that out. That's just a preference for you. And um, sharing your screen. So sharing your screen is another significant difference from a Windows or Mac. You can only share either your desktop or just an application. Um, so generally, you're just going to do desktop. You don't have access to start a whiteboard uh, on your Chromebook. You don't have access to uh, annotation on your Chromebook either. Okay, uh, And that would be the same for users. So students don't have access to that either if they're using a Chromebook. So just so you're aware of that. All right, But desktop should allow you to share your whole screen. It should do whatever you want. You can use external tools to do whiteboards if you wanted to do that. Um, the other thing that you don't have access to in here are to start polls. All right, so you can't start polls from a Chromebook. So keep that in mind also. You can do recordings. So you can record them at, uh, the session here, uh, and you can, uh, it just automatically either does it, it does it to the cloud. So uh, we're going to stop recording there. Uh, breakout rooms, same management features that you have on a Windows or a Mac. Okay, you can op op open the rooms, root care room, assign people to the rooms, all that good stuff. You can just switch from speaker view to gallery view. All right, so that is the same as it is on a Windows machine or a Mac. And um, settings up here, these are your video and audio and accessibility settings, all this stuff. All right, so you can access that material in there. Generally, again, you don't need to mess with this, but if you want to, you can. All right, so that's on a Chromebook. So I'm going to go to uh, the iPad next. I'm going to switch um, the host over to the iPad. So I'm going to go click on more, 
and I'm going to make the iPad the host and go from there. Okay, so now I am in Zoom on my iPad and I'm the host in, on my iPad. So the settings and the, um, the controls are pretty similar on the iPad compared to uh, the other devices. They're just in very different locations. So, um, so up here you'll see on this taskbar that keeps hiding itself is you've got your mute button, your stop video button, your share content button. Your share content button gives you this kind of drop down pop up menu where you're able to either share your screen, um, photos that are on your iPad, files from any of these various cloud storage drive devices. Uh, again, we're not going to share files using um, Zoom because we are going to use Google Classroom to share any files. Uh, you can do a website URL. I like this feature on the iPad because what it does is it opens up a browser uh, right within Zoom. So you're not switching between apps. It's right here in Zoom, which is kind of nice. You can use the address bar to visit other websites. So if I want to type in the district website, I can do that. Um, so you've got a lot of um, you've got a lot of options, which is kind of cool uh, with that, which is I, I like that a lot. All right, so I'm going to click top. I'm going to tap on stop share to stop sharing that. To share other content, you can do bookmarks from your saved bookmarks uh, in your on your iPad, and you also have the whiteboard. The whiteboard works awesome on an iPad because um, it's a touch screen, so it works really nicely. Uh, and if you have a stylus, it's even better. So that's great for math um, and uh, other things that you might want to do. Okay. Um, all right. So that is that. I'm going to stop sharing there. So those are your share controls. Your participant controls are similar to what you have on the other devices. Uh, the difference is you can't hover over the names, so you have to tap the names. So tap the names. You can do all those things for um, for that user. Tap this one. You can do all those. Okay. You can mute all. You can ask all to unmute. The thing that is weird to me is that in noticing your participants, when you don't have that nonverbal feedback. Um, on uh, it right within the participants window. I'll show you why that is in a, in a minute. Uh, but just know that in when you're a host in the participants window, you don't have that nonverbal feedback. Um, but I'll show you again uh, more details on that in just a moment. So that is your participants window. And then the more window gives you some more options. Here you have some nonverbal feedback available to you in the form of some of these emojis, clapping hands, thumbs up, heart, crying face, um, shocked and party. Um, you can record to the cloud, you can chat, you can change your meeting settings, minimize the meeting, you can do a virtual background uh, depending on what kind of iPad you have, you can disconnect your audio. So those are all the settings that you have. On the left hand side you can switch to gallery view or back to speaker view and you can switch your camera. So if you want to uh, show the other side of the iPad you can do that. And then to end the meeting is the red, big red button in the upper right hand corner. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, my hosting capabilities away. Um, I'm going to actually give uh, hosting to um, me again. Yeah, I'm just going to make this person the host, make my computer the host. Yep. All right, and once I do that, look how the participants window changes. Now you have that nonverbal feedback. So that's going to be what the students are going to see on their end if they're using an iPad. So they will have that uh, a capability to do the nonverbal feedback right from the participants window just like everybody else. So that's universal throughout the three different types of devices we talked about today. Windows and PCs, Chromebooks, and the iPad for participants. Those nonverbal feedbacks are all in there. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. I'll, I'm going to wrap this up I'll stop the iPad sharing and uh, we'll wrap up this little tutorial. All right. So that just about wraps it up for the tutorial on the various hosting functions you have um, on Zoom meetings for all those various devices. It pretty much covers everything. Um, know that the device for as far as hosting goes with the least amount of capabilities is the Chromebook. So if it, you, it's at all possible for you to host from uh, a desktop PC uh, or an iMac or a MacBook or a Windows laptop um, or even an iPad, those would be better choices. Those would be the best choices. They give you the most variety of um, 
built-in tools to Zoom. You can definitely get by on a Chromebook if that's all you have available to you. You just have to use some third-party tools for whiteboarding uh, and polling. Um, but uh, aside from aside from that, you should be good to go. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was in a pinch, you can definitely use an iPhone or, or an Android phone to uh, run a meeting um, because all those same features are available on the phones. Uh, it works the same way as a tablet, just the controls are in different locations. And, um, and that's about it. If you have any questions about hosting on any of these platforms, let me know, happy to help. And otherwise, good luck and uh, let me know how you make up. All right, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.